Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make these adorable little matchbook notepads. And you can see inside of this cute little cover, there is a bunch of pieces of paper that you could write notes on. This is a stash buster project, which means you can use up scraps or use up some supplies that you've had around for a while that you just want to get used up. So maybe you could treat yourself to some new papers or something. I don't know about you, but I tend to buy more than I can use because I like those big stacks of paper. So we're gonna be using a bunch of different supplies you probably already have around the house. And I'll be using a stamp set from our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com. And I'm going to use the Thorny Rose stamp set. There are other rose stamp sets that would be beautiful for this as well. And I will link them below just in case you want to try something different um, or see what best suits you. You don't need as many rose stamps as I have, but I really like roses. So that's what we're gonna use. You just wanna make sure you have something that's got like a branch, a sprig of leaves and a flower. And we're gonna be stamping this on a inch and a half circle. So you don't want anything too big. I also have a variety of different inks here. I have a brown, I'm using espresso truffle. I'm using bamboo leaves for a green and for my red I'm using love letter and also rhubarb stock and I also have a little set of um, alphabets this is from years ago this is probably one of my first stamp sets I probably got about 15 years ago and what I did is I spelled the word notes and I taped them together with some washi tape so I wouldn't have to stamp each individual letter so there is a quick tip if you like to use little letter stamps and they can be found pretty affordable at any of your big box stores now I use the word notes but but you could also put somebody's name here and use this as a place card. So if you're having Thanksgiving or Christmas at your home and you're having the family gather around, you could put everybody's name there. And then the nice thing about having a little notepad is kids could play tic-tac-toe or hangman or, um, you know, write little things they don't want to forget. It's a useful place card instead of just a place card that's going to be thrown away. You're also going to need some cardstock and you can actually dig through your scrap bin or um, I actually just found this beautiful um, floral printed paper and it's a nice thick cardstock paper this was from joann's and i just loved the um, aqua and red combination i like that for christmas a lot so um, i picked that up and then if you have any 12 by 12 paper that's got white on the back side like these huge stacks i love these huge stacks but i never use all of them because there's just too much so you want to find any of those thinner pattern papers that you want to use up that have white on the side and we can use some of those so the first thing we're going to do is make our cover so if you're using scraps, you need pieces of paper that are two and three quarter inches wide by eight and a half inches long. But if you're using new paper like I am, I'll show you how to cut it. If you're starting from a new piece of paper, I recommend you score it first. Otherwise you can cut down your paper to two and three quarter inches by eight and a half and score them all at once, um, doing it the same way. But if you're doing, gonna make four at a time, do the score the paper first. It's just a little quicker. You wanna set your paper right side up in your scoring board so that the eight and a half inch side is on the top and the 11 inch side is down the side. Now we're going to score it and we're going to score it on the front side of the paper that's going to show because that's going to give you a neater result. You don't want to score on the back side or you're going to end up um, with, when you fold it, you might get rough or um, gnarly edges that crack. So you want to score on the good side of the paper. If you accidentally score on the other side, just flip it over and rescore on the right side. So we're going to score at three and a half inches. That's gonna make our front cover here. We're gonna score at four inches. That's gonna make the spine here at the top of the, um, of the little booklet. We're gonna score at seven and a half inches. This is gonna be the, this section here is gonna be the back of our booklet. And this last inch that we have left over is going to be the flap that we uh, fold up. So on the back side, you can kind of see how it's scored. So you're gonna you score that the same way if you were doing just a, just a smaller piece of paper. You do the same thing, just have the eight and a half inch wide um, strip along the top, okay? So now what we're gonna do is cut these apart so that we have our little strips here that will be two and three quarters wide. So I have a little trick for this and you probably don't need to do this, but I'm not the best at math. So what I do um, when I'm dividing a piece of 11 inch cardstock in quarters is I first divide it in half, which I know half of a sheet of cardstock is five and a half inches wide. So I cut the five and a half first and then I cut it at two and three quarters. So having it and having it again is just an easy way for me to do it. You can do it however, however it makes sense for you, but that makes sense for me. I have a very antique cutter here, but it works great. 
All right, so now what we're going to do is um, we are going to fold up our booklet so the bumps of our scoring lines are on the inside. And that's how that is going to fold up. So we need to make our pages. And what I usually do is I will cut three sheets of 12 by 12 paper at once and that gives me just the right amount of paper for two booklets. So I've got three sheets of pattern paper here and I'm gonna show you how I cut these. The pages are going to be two and a half inches by three inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to cut down my paper to 10 inches. And so I just cut off whatever side was bound because that's usually the rougher side. And then I'm going to cut it two and a half inches wide. So it'll be a quarter of an inch smaller than our cover. So we'll have um, like an eighth of an inch on each side. So I'm gonna cut this at seven and a half inches basically just to make two and a half inch wide strips. Then five inches. Don't worry if they're not absolutely perfect. And then two and a half inches. Then I can grab two of these sections, which would be six sheets, and I can cut these into three inch pieces. And three inches goes into 12 evenly, so I'm gonna cut this at nine. Six and three. I can do simple math, folks. Just nothing too complex. Nothing with uh, too many. Nothing with fractions smaller than a quarter of an inch. And I'll just set this aside and cut it later. So we're just going to make one of these books together. I like to line up my pages by tapping them on one end, so I get one flush end. And this is be this will be the end that you see. Now I'm going to take my little stack of papers and set them inside my little envelope, my little uh, little matchbook here. So I have about a sixteenth of an inch from the top, and we've got a little gap at the bottom. And there you can see the kind of uneven pages in there. If I open it up, you can kind of see how they're not perfectly even, and that is fine. My cutter is old, like I mentioned, it's antique. Um, so sometimes it doesn't cut exactly accurately, and I'm not the best uh, measurer in the world. Now you want to take a heavy-duty hole punch. If you have a heavy-duty stapler, you could use this too, but I'm going to use a hole punch and a brad. Um, that way this can be taken apart easily if you want to make more pages for it, if you use it up. This would be just a great purse, little pocketbook or purse size or car size notebook. And I'm just going to look through the side here and make sure that my hole is going to go through all the pages. Pages. If you have a short page, it might fall out. So I want to make sure it's going to catch all of those. And then I'm just going to punch through the whole stack at once. All right. Now I am going to grab a brad. And I have a bunch of different oddball brads here. Um, some of them I've actually painted with nail polish. Like I marbleized a bunch of these brads. A couple of years ago, I have a video on my YouTube channel. Um, and I'll use that to secure this. I'm going to push out the leftover paper in there. There we go. And now what you're going to notice is that your front cover is too tall to fit underneath that little brad, but that's all right because what we're going to do is add a neat little touch with our decorative edge scissors. So I always pull these out of the grave. Talk about antiques, right? We haven't been using these for a long time um, in the craft world as a whole, but I really like them because it's just a great way to add a little interest on the edge of something. So I'm just going to hit the edge of that with my decorative scissor and then the, um, the flap is going to tuck right behind there. Okay, you can test to see if you have any loose pages. If your pages seem a little loose, like they want to they want to move a little bit in there, you can just kind of press on the brad a little bit more and that will tighten them so they don't want to wiggle around so much, okay? That will just tighten it on the back. And if you want to, you know, take it apart, you can. You can add more pages and that is really nifty. Now we're going to decorate it. When it comes to time to decorate, um, use the punches that you have handy. They don't have to be exactly like mine. Um, I'm using a, oh, it's about a two inch scallop circle and an inch and a half regular circle, but you can use whatever shapes you want. And if you don't have punches, you could just cut squares. That would be just as pretty. Or cut one square or cut one circle and then use your decorative edge scissors on a piece of paper to um, make a scallop circle. So, you know, please use whatever you have. These tools you bought to use over and over again. So make sure you do. And you can also go through your scrap stash and find all kinds of papers that you have left over that might coordinate really well with your project. So that's what I did here. I am going to start off with with my green ink and my leaf. This is the bamboo shoots. And I'm using that because this is my biggest stamp. When I look at all of my images, the thorn 
thorny kind of thorny vine here is pretty close to the same size but it's airy this is solid so it's going to cover up more space my um rose is also solid but it's smaller so i want to get the big piece in first which is our um which is our vine here so i'm going to stamp him about a few times around you could do three or four i like to try to balance it in threes because it is such a small space i don't want to end up um you know with too much um leftover space so i will cluster it do like kind of three clusters of the leaves okay you really can't mess it up um, if it looks a little too sparse you can always stamp a little bit more on there later so next i'm going to take my rose stamp and i'm going to use the love letter ink which is just kind of like a like a deep pink color just match your pattern paper so if your pattern paper is different than mine use what's going to fit well with your pattern paper i like to turn my stamp a little bit as i use it just so that they're not all exactly the same three fit really well if you feel like you're off balance and you need more flowers take the same flower go with a darker color ink and stamp a few more on you can overlap with a darker ink and it'll look like it's in front um, so that's why i start with a lighter ink first and then if i need to fill in with more i'll go with my darker ink now i'm going to go with that vine because if i stamp over over something it's not going to obscure anything because um, it's more of a like a, a spacious light and airy design and I can kind of overlap and go into the center and you can even stamp this on as many times as you like now something I did on these stamps is I went in with my um, rubber scissors and I snipped off the edges because I was getting halos so if you're ever stamping you see that little halo just grab your scissors cut at an angle just be careful not to cut your image and that will take away that um you know that that semicircle you can get around if you do stamp and get that then stamp another flower on it it's not the end of the world now I'm going to take this um ink here this is a sometimes if I'm like shopping and I see like a clearance on ink cubes um I will grab them if it's their colors I don't have like in another line and that was the case with this I really like that kind of light mint color so I'm always kind of keeping my eyes open for um, stuff that's going to add to and not duplicate my collection now for the center I do want a little ink in there I'm just going to pinch my bristles together like that and just kind of gently swipe it in the center I don't want to get this on top of my uh, red flower because it will mute the color if I get it on the green it's no big deal I am also going to ink the edges of my little banner Ooh, my little banner here I hate it when my ink pad falls face down on my grungy cellar floor because that's where I craft because there's always cat hair and glitter and you know weird stuff on the floor uh, I'm also going to dust it with a little bit of this color because I like this I think it's really pretty and I think that I might use a lighter color of this um, uh, as a backing so I think I'm going to hit that with a little bit of that ink as well uh, just to kind of make it coordinate a little bit better with what I have so that's something else you can do. Use your inks to make everything match a little bit better. That's a really nice idea. I could also use the red, but I just felt like the red didn't stand out very well on there. So I think I'm going to go with, uh, with that color. And the last thing we need to stamp is our notes. So like I mentioned before, I took a piece of washi tape and taped these little cubes together. Look at this. I love these types of stamps. Um, I grab them. I, you know, add to my collection periodically. If I see a new font that I don't have, these are so handy and they're not very expensive. Like this set here was like personal stamp exchange from, I don't know, 1998 or something. <laughs> it was, it's a pretty old one. And I'm just going to ink it up on my dark rhubarb colored ink and just stamp it right down on my banner it helps if you're stamping on something straight like this because it's really easy to line up and now we can assemble stuff i'm going to go ahead and put some atg adhesive on the back of this and just stick that down in the middle of my cover I'm going to use my foam squares on the um, on my white cardstock pieces. <laughs> Remember these? <laughs> Sick of seeing these yet? I'm going to have these foam squares. Yeah, that'll be the time when it's time to call it quits on my YouTube channel when I run out of these foam squares. <laughs> I don't think so. Actually, I don't think I'm ever going to run out with the, on these things. And we'll also put three on the back of this of these smaller ones. People that are new to the channel are going to be like, why is she talking? Why is she always talking about those foam squares? I don't get it. You guys will have to film. If you see anybody asking about foam squares, guys, you, you loyal viewers, you, you got to tell them. You got you to gotta let them know about the foam squares. 
and we'll just center that right up. Oh, that's so pretty. And then we will put this guy underneath. Now, like I said before, if you're hosting a holiday get together, put people's names on these. That's a little crooked. I'm not going to worry, but it is a little crooked. Um, maybe I will. I will try. Sometimes with the foam squares, don't press them down really well until you're sure you got it lined up right and then give it a good squish because those can be pretty sticky. Um, but, you know, use put somebody's name there. That would make a really cute party favor. And I just think these are so adorable. I hope you enjoyed this project. Let me know if you'll try it out as well. Another thing you could do is do this with Halloween papers. Do this with um, cute Halloween cardstock. There's so much of it out nowadays. And you could do like some Halloween pencils and pencil sharpeners and erasers from the dollar store. Um, I know some communities don't want you to give out candy for Halloween. So that would be a great way to to do candy or if you want to have a um maybe an allergy free bag for a kid that can't that wants to trick or treat but can't have candy you could do one of these in like a halloween theme with a with you know halloween pencil halloween eraser pencil sharpener you could have a few bags like that around for uh for parents that you know request a candy free option um i think halloween's all about having fun so you can do this for halloween thanksgiving christmas um they're really cute party favors i think they'd be even adorable at a wedding especially if you used roses and a theme like this i hope you enjoyed this versatile project. I had so much fun designing it. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and check out our sponsor Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them at pegstamps.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.